Sapura Energy returned to the black in its fourth quarter FY19, posting a net profit of 500.43 million ringgit compared with a net loss of 2.29 billion ringgit a year ago. This was boosted by a gain of 2.66 billion ringgit from last November's sale of a 50% stake in its exploration and production business. Quarterly revenue rose 64.5% year-on-year to 1.49 billion ringgit on higher income recorded from its engineering and construction business segment. It declared a dividend of half cent per share. For the full year, it recorded a net profit of 207.55 million ringgit versus a net loss of 2.5 billion ringgit previously, although revenue shrank 9.5% to 4.57 billion ringgit. President and Group CEO Tan Sri Sharil Samsudin says the group's efforts in FY19 have reduced its net gearing to a healthy 0.6 times and provided the financial flexibility to bid for and execute higher value projects. This fiscal year, it will remain focused on growing and executing its order book, which currently stands at 17.2 billion ringgit, the highest in two years. Malaysian businessman John So said to be the mastermind behind the most audacious, extensive and injurious market manipulation scheme ever in Singapore, has pleaded not guilty to 189 charges on the first day of the long-awaited trial. His girlfriend and alleged co-conspirator Kwa Su Ling pleaded trial to 178 charges. So and Kwa are charged with orchestrating a massive fraud to artificially inflate the share prices of Bluemont Group, Asia Sun's Capital and Lion Gold Corp. The counters skyrocketed by at least 800% over nine months before plunging on October 4, 2013, lopping off 8 billion Sing dollars from the Singapore market in over just three days and saddling brokerages with over 350 million Sing of unpaid losses. Charges had also been tendered against So and Kwa's key accomplice, Go Hin Kao. Go, however, had pleaded guilty to two of six charges of aiding and abetting the two last week. He was sentenced to three years jail. Bumi Armada, Tycoon T Ananda Krishnan's flagship, is said to be nearing a deal for a loan of about 500 million USD. Citing sources, Bloomberg reports that banks are finishing details of a five-year credit facility. It said the funds will be used to refinance existing debt that matures in May and for working capital. According to one of Bloomberg's sources, the loan would give more time to the loss-making offshore support vessel operator to sell assets and restructure its business. The company is said to be expected to sign the loan agreement as soon as the next few weeks. Bumi Armada swung to a loss of 2.3 billion ringgit last year against a net profit of 63.82 million ringgit a year ago, dragged down by large impairments of 1.3 billion ringgit. As at end 2018, its current liabilities swelled to 8.77 billion ringgit. Shares of Bumi Armada slumped by 80% last year. The counter closed 5% higher today at 19.5 sen. Bayer Osmo shareholders have been told to reject the takeover bid launched by its largest shareholder, Dato Sri Faro Abdullah. In an advice circular today, independent advisor DWA Advisory deemed the deal not fair and not reasonable. It said the offer price of 5 cent per share is not fair as it is lower than the estimated valuation of 6 to 7 cent per share based on the sum of parts valuation method. The offer price is also a discount of about 23.1% over Bayer Osmo's closing price as at the last full trading date. It is also a discount of between 1.8 and 16.3% against the 5-day, 1-month and 3-month volume-weighted average market price up to the last full trading date. It said the offer is also not reasonable, considering that the offerer intends to maintain the company's listing status and does not intend to compulsorily acquire any outstanding offer shares for which valid acceptances have not been received prior to the closing date. Airbus is looking to grow its supply chain sourcing and repair and overhaul activities in Malaysia by up to 33.3% to 550 million USD a year by 2023 from 400 million USD in 2018. Asia Pacific President John Mark Nar says this growth will be driven by an increase in the production rate of its aircraft, which will also mean increased production among its suppliers. Airbus also expects its MRO segment to grow in tandem with the number of planes in the sky, as these planes would require servicing. The group is expecting a growth in passenger volume of 5.5% per annum for the next 20 years for the Asia-Pacific region alone, as compared with the global average of 
Malaysia is Airbus's largest supply base in Southeast Asia and the fifth largest supply base for composite parts worldwide. It is Airbus's third largest market after China and India.